The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I just read two amazing stories. Maran Rav Chaim Kanievsky Zatzal, Rav Shmari Yosef Chaim Ben, Ben Rav Yaakov Yisrael, who was a personal, personal model for me and my family and for all of Kali Yisrael. So I want to share with you two stories, Yesh Peh, how you have a, literally a mouth and what you could do with people. Everyone went to Rav Chaim Kanievsky and they did crazy stories. I want to share with you two stories that with his mouth, he gave tikkun. What do I mean by that? Story number one. There is a family in London, England, who was very magnanimous, a very wealthy family. On Purim, they gave to the tune of millions of dollars of tzedakah every single year. This person was a tremendous about tzedakah. He came to him, he wrote out checks. Amazing. And the story goes is that he went with his family to go on holiday, to go on vacation. And unfortunately, his car spun out of control and he died in a car crash. The family was shocked because he was a very young man, very magnanimous person. And the question everyone had was, we know the Chazal, the Pasuk says, Staka tatzil mi mavet. The one gives staka, it saves you from death. So that was basically the question everyone had, which is like, Hashem, come on, Really? Like other people, okay, maybe, but talking about somebody who's literally giving away millions of dollars every year, won the world, right? Like, how could that be? So somebody came to Rukhan Kanyevsky and said, what should we tell the Amman now? Because she is asking this question and she's trying to find meaning and solace. What can we say to her? Rukhan is a middle learning. He looked up, his beautiful green eyes, looks up and says, Tagidla, tell her, 20 years ago to the date Hashem was going to take him, but he didn't because Staka Tatsumi Mavet went back into the Sefer. Like, okay, um, all right, fine. The person who was there said this, Rabbi Man, he was there, he was there, he said this story. My mom said this a few days ago. And what happened was they went to the Almana, they went to the widow, said, No, what did Rabbi Man said? Said those words 20 years ago, she turned white. She says, oh my gosh, give me a calendar. They got her a calendar. Exactly to the day, the Hebrew date. 20 years ago, their family was on uh, some type of thing. The car spun out of control. He rammed into a tree and he walked out unscathed. That exact Hebrew date, 20 years ago. Now, how in the world did he know that? The Chavruta asked him that. He was a cheeky guy, as they say in English, right? He was a wise guy guy. He said... Excuse me, Kodorov, how in the world did you know that? Is that Nevoah? So Kaim looked up and said, Efsher. Anyway, so says Gemara, Efsher means maybe. Right? And he just kept on going. How does one do that? The answer is, Reb Chaim knew that with his mouth he'll be able to give the family sauce. Meaning you had that extension. I don't know why Hashem took him now, but Hashem did save him before. Hashem's looking out for you. That gave the family Nechama. Second story. I'm sorry, I keep talking about car accidents. Because everyone's like, Rabbi, is that the theme for tonight? Car accidents, one-on-one, right? Yeah, well, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the car accident, the ne- next car accident, there was somebody who was driving his car in Bnei Brak, and unfortunately, the car, out of, out of nowhere, literally, there were stories that Toyota Camrys, they just started accelerating when they weren't. People were going through windows. You can look that up. You know, believe me, a lot of people uh, have these stories like, Rabbi, how do you know all these random facts? But anyways, so this uh, Toyota Camry, it literally just started taking off. And the guy couldn't control it. He tried to slam me on the brakes. Nothing. He tried putting on emergency brakes. The, was like, the car was spinning a bit. And he jumped the curb and ran over somebody. Totally flattened the person. You can imagine the guy was shaking. He literally killed somebody. He can't believe it. Like, oh my gosh, what in the world did I do? Atsala was there. There were ambulance. They're bringing the person out. It was horrible. This person was traumatized. He came to him, Kanievsky, literally shaking. He says, what? Who? Why? Ha! Well, help me. I, I can't get that thought out of my head. Rebchaim looked up from his Gemara and said, Amalek, and kept on going. So they thought he didn't hear the question, so he repeated it again. He says, Kfar Amati, I already said, it. Amalek, whatever. Amalek, what's he talking about? They did a background check and they found out this person that he ran over, he was somebody that happened to come from the Netherlands, or so they thought. Actually, he was not really from the Netherlands. He actually was a Nazi informant, and he was uh, one of the Hitler Youth. SS got very proud, 
person of the soldiers, and he helped send people to the death camps, and uh, he was a proud Nazi. And he figured after World War II was over, the one place where no one would think that a Nazi Hitler youth would go to would be Israel. Great book, Double Identity. Read it. It's a great book. But that's the idea. And no one would ever think to check in Israel. That's where, what? Surrounded by Jews? And says, exactly. No one will think to look for me there. And that's where he was. So you killed Amalek. That's what Amalek is. Killing men, women, and children for no reason other than the Jewish. You didn't do anything wrong. Yesh ped. Your mouth can be mechazek other people. That's literally what Rukhaim Kanias did as well. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.